Welcome to Bad Shit, a frank and funny look at living with mental illness. While we'll touch on several illnesses, Bat Shit is focused on those along the spectrum of bipolar disorders. I'm your host, Adam. And I'm your host, Brad. And we're both bipolar, so strap in and let's see how Bat Shit we really are. Spoiler alert. Pretty damn Bat Shit. This episode's topic... Diet and exercise. Diet and exercise. We're getting yoked. That's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about getting yoked. We're going to get jacked. Yeah. We're going to get swole. Swole. What do the, what do the kids say? Um, Chad. Chad? <laughs> Is that really a thing? You're a Chad? You go to you go to weight. You go to gyms where people weight lift a lot. Do they say that Chad? No. like That's like a real young person thing. Wow. It's, it's actually, I think, like a video game. Is it really? Culture thing. Oh. Yeah, my, my kids say it a lot. I was going to say, we play video games. I've never yeah, heard of that. But my kids are like, if somebody's really good at Fortnite, they're a Chad. <laughs> oh, but isn't that a, oh, that, that's a positive or a negative? I, it's a positive now. I, no. I think it probably started as a negative. No, it's just gone. Yeah. It's gone that other way. Yeah. Um, so one of the reasons we wanted to talk about this is because we both diet, we both exercise, and mm-hmm. we've had a person or two write in asking for us to talk about it. And another huge reason to talk about it is there are a lot of, and we've mentioned this several times and we'll do it again, several armchair experts out there who are like, hey man, if you're depressed or, you know, you think you have a mental illness, just, you know, do a couple of crunches and you'll be good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there, there are a lot of people touting a, a, a term I learned recently is the manosphere. Ooh, what's the manosphere? The manosphere is all these uh, videos and forums and shit online where men talk about like being men. Like like Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan would be part of the manosphere. Okay, yeah. okay. So there, And there's a spectrum. Like it goes from, you know, people who are just trying to give workout advice okay. to people who are like, mental illness does not exist. Oh, interesting. Um, and but one of the things they like to tout out in the manosphere a lot that comes up is um, that diet and exercise is all you need. And it, That's it. And it just, fixes everything. Just all you need is yeah. that. And I never comment on anything online. Uh, and I had to the other day. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because I was scrolling through Instagram. I actually did this on our uh, batshit Instagram account. Okay. At mental health is batshit. Yep, please. Um, and uh, but there was some. Some guy had posted this big thing about how you can cure depression and anxiety just through exercise alone. And it made me so angry because if, if you guys have been listening to the show for a while, you know, I got up to like 320 pounds in mm-hmm. the pandemic, started dieting and exercising, working my ass off, lost 100 pounds. I'm like 235 right now with a 34 inch waist. So, you know, mostly muscle. Yeah. Um, I've done powerlifting competitions. I've done strongman. I boxed, um, and during all of that, I had my worst fucking episodes. Sure, it didn't fix a goddamn thing. Well, well and I think <laughs> I think that's actually one of the most um, painful things for me is that idea that working out or dieting is going to cure it because mm-hmm. it's not going to cure it at yeah. all. But what it will do is help it. Yes. But the thing is, if let's say you're recently diagnosed, right, and you're looking for a solution, which doesn't exist. There are no solutions. But you start dieting and exercising because some armchair expert told you to do that, and that'll solve all your problems. And it doesn't. So you stop. Yeah. You'll just quit because you're like, well, this isn't solving. I'm still having manic episodes. I'm still having depressive episodes. Yeah. So obviously this workout thing is bullshit. And I'm like, no, not entirely. It's just not a cure-all. Because I will say this, when I'm, I, I've done every diet under the sun. I also work out, but I like playing with my diet just to kind of see what the results are. I've done keto, I've done paleo, I've done four-hour body, intermittent fasting. Um, my personal favorite is four-hour body. That's not me promoting it. That's just me explaining to you how this works. Although if the four-hour body people want to sponsor the show. Sure, yeah, Tim yeah. Ferriss, give me a call. Um <laughs> But it's that idea is like when I am on a diet and I'm eating really clean, because that's what all these diets that I just mentioned really emphasize is clean eating. When I'm doing that, I feel better. Mm -hmm. I feel clearer. My head is clearer. I don't struggle to wake up in the morning as much. Like I'm, I'm getting out of bed with more energy, better rested. 
Because when you're intaking a lot of like artificial sugars and alcohol and things like that, you don't sleep as well. When you don't sleep as well, you know, you're tired the next day. Everything's harder. Yeah. So I am a big proponent of diet. I think eating real clean, just like Brad's a big proponent of working out, um, it's still, it's just not a cure. Yeah. It's, you know, we've talked about before that these things, diet, exercise, supplements, each mm-hmm. one might give you an extra 2% or 5%. Sure. And that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're never going to replace medication and therapy. Right, right. But in tandem with medication and therapy. Yes. And that's yeah. just it. Like Because here's the other thing. Um, I don't know the general, I mean, I actually do know the demographic that we're talking to because we get that on our little Spotify page. But um, so we're talking to people for the most part that are over the age of 30. Right. That's like, yeah, yeah. Um, your body's not going to change the way it used to in its 20s, like how quickly it takes six months, eight months to really start seeing like a long term change and progression. You know, like you start going to the gym, you start hitting that gym, you might drop some water weight initially, you might start feeling, you know, trimmer, but like you want to see those veins bulge, you know what I mean? You want to really drop uh, waist sizes. Um, especially if you're brand new to working out, that's going to take some time. You know what I noticed yesterday? What's that? That I, I never even thought of before. Mm. I, I now have visible a uh, visible vein running down each of my calves. Ooh, down the calves. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know how I feel Yeah, about is that this. like attractive? <laughs> I don't know. We should put that on the poll. That's going to yeah, be the poll this week. Pole. <laughs> do, you, do you find a visible calf vein attractive? <laughs> is that like, is that your kink? Like, I really hope that like skyrockets. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. everyone was to is like, yeah, I love me some kink. <laughs> I love calf veins. Love calf veins. <laughs> That's actually our real demographic. None of these people have bipolar. They're just really into calf veins. Yeah. And we're waiting for this opportunity to let us know. <laughs> They're like, that guy looks like he has calf He's probably got calf veins. Let's hold out. Let's hold out for 20 some odd episodes <laughs> just to make sure we can see those sweet yeah. calf gains. You know what I think a lot of this comes down to? The people who say that diet and exercise are a cure-all mm. is... We've talked before about how terms for mental illness get bandied about for normal emotions. Okay. And I think a person suffering normal sadness, the blues, Mm -hmm. you know, they just, they have a dip in their mood in a normal way. We still call that, that they're depressed. That they're depressed, yeah. And I think a person like that, yeah, you can probably kick that with diet and exercise. Sure. Same thing with anxiety. Yeah. If you're not suffering from clinical anxiety. And you're just maybe a little bit of a, a normal, anxious person, mm-hmm. and you're experiencing just a little bit of normal anxiety. Yeah, diet and exercise will probably fix that. There you go. You know? But but that doesn't mean if you don't see an immediate response to it. Because here's the thing: diet and exercise is hard, bro. Yeah, it's hard. So like I was saying, I'm doing the four hour bar- body right now, which honestly I, I don't think is too bad. Um, here are the rules: six days a week, uh, no fruit. No uh, white carbohydrates. Um, You have to have 35 grams of protein within like an hour of waking up in the morning. Uh, What am I forgetting? Um, No dairy. And that you just killed it for me. (laughs) And um, keep it simple. So basically, because here's the thing: a lot of people are like, I can't do a diet. I uh, I like to have variety in my meals. Really, really, I tell you what: write down your meals for the next two weeks. You're going to see a lot of repetition. But anyway. On the seventh day, you get to eat and drink whatever the fuck you want. It's pretty amazing. See, that's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, But my point being is that if you're not accustomed to diet and exercise and you go, okay, no more cheese, no more apples, no more rice, no more potatoes for six days in a row, that can be really hard. That can yeah. be really hard. And you'll want to quit every day, especially if you don't see immediate results. I always tell people, find a diet that's similar to the to the your favorite foods. Yeah. Right? Because there's so many diets out there. There's vegetarianism, there's vegan, there's mm-hmm. high carb, low fat, yep. high fat, low carb. Mm-hmm. You know, what is it that you like? If you love bread, the keto diet's not for you. No, it's not. Yeah. You're no just way. gonna end up craving bread all the time. Yeah. Find a diet that incorporates bread and pasta. Yeah, there you, you go. Know, for me, my favorite foods are dairy, mm-hmm. uh, meat, yep, bacon. Mm-hmm. Can't do without bacon. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, like I said on the episode with Carlos, if he was made out of bacon, he wouldn't have left. Yeah, he wouldn't have left. He'd be dead. <laughs> I, I think my dogs might have gotten to him before you <laughs> yeah, did, that's though. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, but so for me, I always I, – I see the best body composition. Mm-hmm. That, oh, that didn't smell well. 
no. <laughs> body composition results. You mean veiny calves. When I eat something similar to a keto diet. Right. You know, um, high fat, high protein, low carbs. Well, well and here's yeah. another interesting thing I was reading about. Um, uh, dieting for your blood type. Have you looked into I've this heard at about all? That. I so haven't really looked into it. There's but. actually an app you can get on your iPhone for like I think it's like three to four dollars. And what it does is it goes, okay, what type of blood do you have? And I love doing this because I've asked a bunch of people this and no one knows their blood type. Like I've been like, hey, what's your blood type? And they're like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't know, right? Yeah. I mean, that, which I think is hilarious to me. But uh, it doesn't matter. Point being is you open up this app and you're like, it, it lists like every type of food and it'll say, hey, this is what your body's really good at digesting. Here's what it's not so great at digesting, and here's what it sucks at digesting. So yeah. you can eat whatever you want. Just know, for instance, that, for instance, I digest beef really well, like super well. Yeah, me too. Um, turkey, not so much, which sucks. That's funny you say that. I wonder mm-hmm. if we have the same blood type. Right, maybe. Or uh, pork. I don't, I don't do pork well. I yeah. love pork. I love bacon so much. And like I said, I can still eat it, but I don't – my body do doesn't like process pork chop. I oh god no and I loved I when I was a kid growing up that was like pork chop night was like yeah. every second Wednesday or something like that and unbeknownst to me I shouldn't have been eating that yeah. you know and and you look at my diet you look at that blood type thing and again this is not me um, advocating for any of this I'm just again we're sharing our experiences and this is what I've experienced that if I'm going to the store and I got to go grocery shopping anyway and my choices are between pork and beef and i look at my little list and i go oh i handle beef better than pork why not get the beef yeah you know especially when you're doing one of these diets where you're supposed to keep it simple anyway um i'm saying all of this because you need to do something that you can incrementally increase to help you get healthier and that you're going to enjoy yep and that will fit with your lifestyle right if you pick a diet that you feel like you have to power through and mm-hmm. you're going to be miserable doing it, you're not going to stick with that diet. Right. It's like, and even if you did, you're going to be miserable you're doing be miserable. it. You're going to be miserable. It's the same with working out, right? Yeah. Like it, you need to start, If let's say you're going to weight lift, right? And you're not someone who's ever lifted weights before. Start slow. You know what I mean? Grab yeah. some 15s, you know, grab some 10s, whatever it is. And, and start, maybe you hate weightlifting. Yeah. And but that you love tennis. Yeah. And then you still, you start doing tennis. But yeah. either way, don't start thinking going to be Venus Williams yeah. or you're not going to be vain calfed, you know, Brad Hodson. <laughs> like you got to incrementally build your way up. And that's what a big thing for diet is for me is it's helped me over the years incrementally change how I eat. Yeah. Right. Like, and, and finding foods that you can tolerate well, that are tasty. Like you'll try new recipes that even when you're no longer on that diet, you'll stick with because you love that recipe. Yeah. Or you sit there and you like, you're looking for, um, once you eat, uh, uh, clean and you're like, man, I don't want to go fully back, but I'm really craving this. That's when you start like really doing the deep dives into what can I do to season various baked goods with whey protein powder or, you know, yeah. replace flour with oats and things like that. Can I tell you the greatest thing I've discovered. Mm. In, in cooking food at home, anything from eggs to any kind of fancy dish. I, mm. I use it with uh, seasoning on a steak, mm. even MSG. Really? Which they used to think caused cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's been disproven. But it's it's just, it's monosodium glutamate. Right. It's pure umami flavor. Yeah. That, that's Well, that used to be flavor. in Chinese food yeah. in the 90s, like all over the place. Yeah. But then there was that, you know, like you said, cancer scare. And so everybody's like, we don't use MSG yeah. anymore. But you can make anything. Man, you put that oh, in some eggs. That's oh. a great idea. Oh. Uh, another thing that's really great is macadamia nut oil. If Ooh, you can yeah. find it, it's like fucking impossible to find. But if you can find it, it's 10 times better than your olive oil yeah. or your avocado oil or your sunflower or whatever you're using to cook so yeah find some macadamia nut oil i'll also add to that if you want to just spend a little bit of money it'll last you a while mm. but it's, it's usually like 12 bucks for a thing up front is duck fat Ooh, yeah 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 Man, yeah. you yeah. make eggs or like fries or something mm-hmm. duck fat mm. oh my god well cooking with fat in general is yeah. amazing like you know you save the grease Save the grease and just it doesn't take a lot of it. Like I got I'm not, a jar of bacon grease I pull out for do, everything. <laughs> right? I'm telling you, and I'm not I'm this is again, don't like drown your vegetables in bacon grease. That's not the solution. But you know, if 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 having 
a quarter teaspoon of or a teaspoon of bacon grease to marinate your pan or to slick up your pan, which is what you cook your stir fried vegetables in. Yeah. Great, man. And I tell you, you know, there are a lot of vegetables that I don't really care for mm-hmm. that I'll eat that way. So like asparagus or sure. Brussels sprouts, you chop that up, fry it up in a pan with some onion, a little bit of bacon, in some bacon grease, right. maybe toss in some pine nuts. There you go. Oh my God, that's delicious. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like kale. Like you, you, Kale initially, I hated kale. But then yeah. you learn how to really make kale, like with the lemon juice, and really breaking down the, the, yeah. the construction of it. And all of a sudden, it's delicious. But again, this is all... What we're talking about doing is hard because it's going to yeah. require you to change your habits. Especially if you're a normal American who eats fast food which is four times a week. Which is everywhere, and we don't blame yeah. you for doing it because it's easy. Yeah. And it like your life's hard enough to sit there and be like, oh, my God, i got to learn how to make uh, yeah. macadamia you know, nut asparagus with Brussels sprouts. And this is why we're saying start slow. Start slow. Slow. Mm-hmm. Y- you know what's a great easy way to improve your diet tomorrow? Just have green vegetables with every meal. Yeah. That's it. Eat your hamburgers. Eat your, you know, mm-hmm. fucking, uh, um, I don't know, chicken parmesan between two breaded chicken breasts. I don't know what you're eating. But, um, and just have vegetables with every meal. Yeah. You will feel better and you'll poop more, which is important. Yeah. A lot of people don't poop enough. Put, put some broccoli in an air fryer and, oh, yeah. uh, and smother it in butter. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's it's, the thing. Like, this stuff can be tasty. That's yeah. that's one of the problems I think we have the idea of a diet. Right. Is like brown rice and chicken breast. Or like a rice cakes. Remember rice cakes? Oh, yeah. Blah. Yeah. Blah. Blah. And okay. you know, here's the thing it all works. Mm hmm. You just got to find what you can stick with. <laughs> hey, friends. Brad and I started Batshit because we needed someone to talk to about our bipolar. So when looking for a sponsor, BetterHelp was the obvious choice. BetterHelp provides access to therapists via text, via Zoom, via email, via phone call, 24 hours, seven days a week. I don't need to tell anyone how broken the American healthcare system is, especially when it comes to mental illness. But the beautiful thing about BetterHelp is that they'll work with you. Go to www.betterhelp.com backslash batshit. You'll get 10% off for the first month and you'll get someone to talk to right now. If you need to talk to someone, do it. Please. We love you. Enjoying Batshit? Please like, subscribe, and share it on social media. If you have someone you think may need to hear it, we encourage you to share it with them and to start your own conversation about mental health. (laughs) You know, I couldn't, I could never be a vegan. Yeah, if no. push came to shove, I could be a vegetarian, but I couldn't give up. I could give up meat before dairy. Yeah, you're a big dairy guy, huh? I love dairy. Is and cheese or milk or ice cream? What is it? All of it. Butter. Just all of it, yeah. Yeah, butter, heavy cream, mm. um, sour cream. Sure. Creme fraiche. Oh, creme fraiche. <laughs> creme um, fraiche. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, and and that's, that's an interesting thing, too, is there's uh, uh, diets you can get based on your DNA. Right. And your uh, genealogy. Right. And, you know, my, my genealogy, my, my people, my, <laughs> my people were Nordic, Yeah, you know, like basically I'm, I'm Viking stock. Right. Right. And they eat tons of dairy. Sure. And in fact, the, uh, the mutation that allows people to eat dairy, um, because, uh, you know, a lot of people are lactose intolerant, mm-hmm. different populations in the world can't handle dairy. Right. Uh, but the mutation that allows, uh, adult humans to digest dairy started with, uh, in uh, Vikings. Well, that's ostensibly what the eating for your blood type is, yeah. right? Because your blood type and where you were raised genetically and where your people are from all informed what you were able to eat and how well you were yeah. able to handle what you ate. And, and because I can handle dairy, like not only is it tasty, but uh, if you can handle it, it's incredibly healthy. Right. But, um, but like for a instance, lot of people can't. Right. Bread. I can't handle bread. I fucking love yeah. bread. Not dude. only does bread make me fat, I'm gonna get a little gross here. Guys. Here we go. Um, I've I've noticed after I cut out bread mm-hmm. and then started reintroducing it, um, I am on the toilet so much longer every yep. day. Yep. And and I it's it's not easy. It requires a lot more effort to clean yourself yeah, it, afterwards. Sure. Let's say that. Sure. That's, that's a very <laughs> political way to say that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I love bread. And like, especially like everyone else during the pandemic, I'm like, I'm going to learn how to make sourdough bread. Yeah. Um, 
but I just like I just the sourdough I can handle really sourdough. Yeah, I, th- mm. I think it's because of the uh, uh, the the different kind of yeast. Oh, maybe. That's in it. Oh, maybe. But um, long story short, bread is just something. It's better if I cut it out. Yeah, I'm just better if I cut it out. Well, because for me, bread is bread and pasta are just a conveyance for the yummy stuff. Exactly. The right. pasta is there for the sauce, mm-hmm. and it's like well, I can put the sauce on veggies, right? Or the or bread's something. there for the meat and the sand right. and the it's lettuce like, and the sandwich. Yeah, Separately. yeah. But here's the th- here's a, let's say you're eating food that doesn't agree with you. Now you're bloated. Like forget forget being on the toilet. You're sluggish and you're bloated because your body is trying to handle that food that it doesn't handle well. And then that not only affects your energy, mm-hmm. but it makes your brain cloudy. Right. And if you're already dealing with mental illness, right. and you're not as sharp, and you know, some people, uh, I, I experience this too, if you're eating poorly, it causes, even if you don't have something like bipolar, mm-hmm. it can cause uh, mood shifts. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, you yeah. have your highs and your lows based on blood sugar mm-hmm. and other things. And then, you know, if you're a comfort eater, which I would guess is most everyone in the world, when you don't feel well based off of eating crappy, you're just going to want to eat more crappy. Yeah. So it's nuts, man. Like, yeah. And, you know, and that can affect... Whether you, whether you gain weight or you're t- too skinny for, for your ideal of what you want to sure. be, whatever it is, um, that can affect your mood, especially if you're dealing with this stuff. Mm-hmm. When I got super heavy, and, you know, there I, I don't want to be, like, fat phobic. Like, there are people who are overweight who are perfectly happy. Totally, and, and healthy. Awesome. And there are people who are healthy and overweight. Yeah. Like, that time, uh, overweight might not be the right word. Bigger people mm-hmm. who are healthy. It's, yeah. you know, that's just genetically what they're pre I had, to. like, all my, when I was super heavy, all my blood work mm-hmm. was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Like, I, you know, as far as uh, medical panels, mm-hmm. I was healthy. I couldn't get down on the floor and play with my kids. Right. I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs. Yeah. Being a person who had traditionally been active, there were a lot of things I enjoyed I couldn't do. Right. Um, you know, my my spouse didn't find me attractive. Um, the mailman no longer found me what? attractive. But now I thought that you, we had some. I know, seriously. After uh-huh. you took your virginity and everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> That was a deep cut from one of the episodes. Try and find that. Make sure you binge us. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know, for me, all of that contributed to the biggest depressive episode I think I've ever had. Sure. And then, like you said, it became cyclical. I mm-hmm. felt like shit, so I would sleep even more, mm-hmm. and then I would want comfort food. Right. Comfort food for me, dude. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Yeah. And and you know, uh, here's. Uh, a trick for me, I do protein powder with athletic greens and collagen every morning. Like that's what I do. Athletic greens is a health food supplement. Um, and people look at me cross-eyed when I say I take athletic greens because athletic greens for a 30 day supply is something like a hundred bucks, right? Or 110 bucks. And people are like, that's insane. And I go, hold the, hold your roll for like half a second. How much do you spend on DoorDash or how much do you spend going out to, uh, eat um uh, uh, let's say mcdonald's because mcdonald's and burger king are like 20 bucks now for say, a meal the, the kids the other night wanted mcdonald's okay and i was like all right all right i'll get you mcdonald's two quarter pounders and a thing of fries because mm-hmm. i i didn't eat it right it was just for the kids yeah let them poison their bodies <laughs> yeah, they-, <laughs> yeah. they can flush it out yeah they'll be fine whatever they'll burn <laughs> it off <laughs> um but uh, yeah, two quarter pounders and a thing of fries was something like thirteen bucks. Thirteen bucks. Yeah, and that's not yeah. even a full meal. There's no drink there. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, people look at me crosswise and say, "Okay, you know what? I spend like a hundred bucks every month on the athletic greens. Every three months, I spend maybe sixty bucks on protein powder. And every month and a half, two months, I do collagen for thirty. And you do the math, and that sounds like a lot up front." But I'm also now I'm not eating breakfast. I have my protein shake. So you're cut like do not let these initial ideas of um you know what it's going to be too expensive to take these supplements or it's going to be too expensive to, you know, eat healthy and change my diet like all of a sudden I got to be, you know, what duck duck fat. Brad wants me to buy duck fat. Duck's expensive. What the fuck yeah. is Brad talking about? But in terms of a the overall cost compared to what you're spending on other things, and B, the benefits of spending the money to, on the food and on the supplements and on the things that are yeah. going to make you feel better. But the caveat with that is a lot of supplements are bullshit. 
Sure. And you have and to do you your gotta, research. You gotta do your research. You gotta do your research. Um and don't do bro research. Don't no. go on like Reddit or something. No. You're gonna see, you know, a bunch of I remember things like glutamin, L glutamin. Mm-hmm. Everybody was touting that. You have to oh take it, God. you have to take it. And then study after study started coming out that was yeah. like, this does nothing. Well, and see, and that's just it, people. <laughs> there are studies. There are studies on these things that mm-hmm. like a lot of these, like you said, bro culture, they don't read those studies. No, no, no. They just yeah. go on Reddit or they, you know, read some talk like, to other dudes at the gym. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, that guy must know what's going on. No, nah, yeah. he's gonna die at forty. Um <laughs> that's me. And I hope he doesn't die at forty, whoever that mystery man is. Maybe forty two. Forty two, yeah. yeah. Well yeah. You crest the hill and then then you <laughs> yeah. on the way down, yeah, that's then, when you fucking bite it. Then you can go out. <laughs> um we yeah. sp- we've, we've talked a lot about diet. We should move on to exercise real quick, yeah. more so. But one, one thing I just want to add on supplements, mm. um, and again, I suggest anybody do their own research on this. Sure. I've seen some evidence that specifically for bipolar and people who are depressed, uh, vitamin, vitamin B6, D- B12, and vitamin D. Yeah, vitamin D, huge, right? Because, help. yeah. Yeah. Especially if you work in like an office building or something where you don't get outside a lot because the sun's the main source of vitamin yeah. D. And, you know, we're all fucking on our computers and screens all damn day. We're on it right now. Uh, <laughs> um, I hope you're listening to this podcast while you walk around in a park. But let's be I honest. Hope you're not watching. Adam and I were talking about how sleep deprived we are and like these bags. Under our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I like how we're doing one about like physical health right yeah. now. Yeah, we're like, uh, I'm drinking scotch. He's drinking scotch. Hey, why aren't you fuckers healthier, huh? <laughs> mm, do as I say, no. do as I do. Uh, but okay, let's talk about um, um, physical fitness real quick. Because yeah. I feel like this is a lot less complicated, in my opinion. But maybe that's just because we've been active most of our lives. Yeah. Just find something you like to do. I got a buddy, Jim, who always says, like, I, I can't go to the gym. I hate it. I hate the gym. I hate lifting weights. Don't put me on a treadmill. That's stupid. However, put me in an open space with a ball and I will chase that shit for hours at a time. Soccer, (laughs) you know, kickball, like, because you can do all these intramural sports now. Again, Quidditch. What? You can do Quidditch. No, you can't. That requires a broom and flying. So they run around. You, You have to hold the broom between your legs while you're running. But like with your legs, how would you do that? No, in between your legs. Oh, so oh I see. You got, you got a hand on, on one. Arm. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's got all the different balls and the bat. And then there's a guy who's the snitch. And he's got like You got to catch the guy? Yeah, you have to catch him. He's always some dude who's fast and knows Brazilian jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> so when Brazilian. you try to get the snitch, he just like takes you down <laughs> yeah, or like hip tosses yeah, yeah. you. Or, or he's like an Aikido guy. Oh, yeah. That's funny. yeah. <laughs> but but like, yeah, I mean, you can go, you can find softball, basketball, any, like if you're not a gym person, because yeah. I totally get if you're not a gym person, the gym can be intimidating, yeah. especially when you're first starting out. You know what I mean? But and go. some some people love running. I hate it. Yeah, or just like, walking. I would never do it. But that's what I was going to say. There have been a lot of studies that show, as far as the health benefits and for weight loss, yep, that walking the same distance as jogging yep. that distance gets you the same results. Bro, there's it's called rucking. Okay, rucksack. It's what military does. Like all those uh, men and women who are in the military walk around with an 80 pound sack on their back. Yeah. Right. You can walk for a mile with a 20 to 40 pound uh, weighted vest, which is what I do. I'll walk on the treadmill for like an hour at a time with a 20 pound weighted vest on. That'll get your heart rate up like real easy, especially if you start playing with the incline. So start slow. Start slow with walking, and then yeah. If you added a, da- a thirty-minute daily walk, yeah, preferably in the morning, so that you sure, can you get sunlight, started, fresh air, yeah. stretch your day off well. Maybe listen to a podcast. Yeah, there you go. I'm a two tired guys who drink scotch, <laughs> <laughs> telling you to get in shape. <laughs> Is that right? What's uh, wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, a uh, a daily walk you'll see a big benefit from yeah. because a, a lot of the things that happen with exercise, you get the endorphins. Yep. And uh, and the dopamine yep. rush. And that can help take the edge off depression. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, but you also get your your blood circulating, which mm-hmm. helps you get rid of all the, the waste yeah. that's that's in our blood. Exactly. It's basically, think of your body as a car. If your car isn't moving, right, all of a sudden the oil's f- settling to the bottom of the engine, the gas is Sometimes like, the battery stops working. Exactly. So, like, move your body. 
put some yeah. fuel in it first thing in the morning and get moving. One of my buddies, the way he started, he used to walk to his Starbucks every morning. Because, you know, like how many of us drink, like you got to get your Starbucks, you got to get your coffee in the morning. Yeah. And his Starbucks was, I can't remember if he said it was like a half mile away from him, something like that. It wasn't far. Yeah. He just walked to his Starbucks and walked back. Took him maybe 25 minutes all day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there you go. Now you're being productive. And you're actually exercising. And you know what you could do even if you live in a place, you know, because there are a lot of neighborhoods when you get outside of cities Mm -hmm. um, where they may not have sidewalks. It's not very walkable. Right. Uh, You could hop in your car in the morning and drive over to where the Starbucks is, Mm -hmm. go for a walk or go ahead and drive to your office early, go for a walk around there. You don't have to go immediately out the door. Like, get in your car, start listening to a podcast that you continue <laughs> listening to. I love how Brad long. keeps doing that, like, not-so-subtle plug <laughs> of the podcast. Like, but these people are already listening to a podcast. <laughs> Listen more. Listen more. Uh, double your listening. Um, Every episode twice. Uh, the other thing is, because uh, for a long time I didn't work in an office, and now I've been working in an office the last five years. If you got to talk to someone, get up and go do it. Or every hour, yeah. get out of your chair, walk around. It, again... We're not telling you this because we want you to have six pack abs. Fuck six pack abs. Yeah. Fuck veiny calves. Who the hell wants that? No one wants that. But, I mean, you know, we've talked about before. Like you and I are. I would. I would say we're in excellent shape. Sure. Um, I mean, that shape is a circle, but yes. it's. <laughs> <laughs> but neither of us have six pack abs. No, no, because no. Because you know what? Food's good. Right. Also, and who gives a shit about six pack abs? You need something <laughs> like six to seven percent body fat. Oh, to score. Insane. It's ridiculous. If you've ever met somebody who walks around shredded, mm-hmm. like like I've I've known people preparing for bodybuilding competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are miserable. Like yeah. they feel horrible. Their joints ache. Right. They have no energy. They can't think straight. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's I, not a way to walk. That's not well, something to aspire to. We are not telling you this because we care how much you lift. We're not telling you this because we want you to have six-pack abs. We're telling you this because it is a tool in your toolkit to get better. Yeah. You're going to get better. You add it to the other stuff you're doing. Yeah. And again, no matter what you see online, it doesn't replace nope. the other stuff you're nope. doing. And go to therapy. Yeah. Yes. Betterhelp.com. Betterhelp.com. shit. Yep. You get 10% off your first month. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to someone. I don't care who. Talk yeah. to someone. If it's if it's better help, awesome. If yeah. it's your fucking mailman, I don't care. Yeah. Hell, email us. Yeah, go ahead. We got we got people who love to do it and we love hearing from them. Yeah. Uh but again, it's it's a step in the right direction. It's going to make you healthier. It's going to boost um uh, all the 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 positive endorphins and dopamines and you know the the chemicals running through your brain that you want and at, at the end of the day what are you doing you're getting out you're maybe meeting yeah. people you wouldn't have met naturally organically you're getting like, sunlight you're getting fresh air yeah you're getting some movement and it just it puts something else in your day one thing with bipolar especially is we need structure Mm -hmm. Um, and putting that somewhere in your day helps with that structure. Huge, huge. And it it just gets you out of the house. I don't know about you folks, but I get, I get in such bad ruts Mm -hmm. where I don't want to leave the house Yeah. and having some kind of activity planned, a daily walk, going to the gym, playing tennis with your buddy, whatever it is, forces you to, to get out and get, get out of the depression and hedonia zone. Right. You know. And and the, something to add on to that when it comes to schedule, try and do it at the same time every day. Like, or if it's not, it's, it doesn't have to be every day. It can be every third day or every second day or every yeah. fourth day. But if you sit there and you're like, you know what? Every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m., I'm going to go for a half mile walk. That's going to make it easier than telling yourself, okay, I got to walk every day. Because yeah. if you set a time, now you've created a schedule, and you will figure out a place to fit that into your pre-existing schedule, be that with the work, with the kids, with the wife, the husband, whatever. You know what I mean? Keep your schedule so you're like, I'm going to the gym, or I'm doing my walk, or I'm going to play badminton every Thursday night with my friends. Yeah. It's going to make your life easier, and you'll feel better. Mm-hmm. And you'll feel better. This is not a cure. It's a feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like you said, it's, it's a tool in the toolbox. It's it tool in the toolbox, but it's, but it's one you can control. Yeah. Like that's what I love about exercise and diet. At the end of the day, it's a tangible thing 
you can control. Yeah. You can't necessarily control all of the results, you know, but it's easier to control that than to control your brain chemistry. Yeah. You know, your genetic makeup, yeah. your mental he- like mental health is hard to fucking control. Yeah. It, it so if you can have something that you can grab onto, like now you're going to start making yourself healthier. You're going to start seeing improvement in your physical form and your mental health, like the clarity that we talked about. And all of a sudden, there's something that you can latch onto and say, hey, look, this thing that I am doing is helping. It's helping. Yeah. Yeah. And I have control over it. And I have control over it. And again, it might only get you 5%, but you know what? Some days that 5% is going to make a difference. That's huge. It's yeah. huge. That's going to be the 5% you need right. to not sink into a horrible depression. And you know what? It might come in weird ways. Like, for instance, look at it like this. Let's say you start working out, right? And now you've worked out for like six, eight months. You're looking great, right? You have a depressive episode. You can't control that. But what you can do is when you're in that depressive state, and you're, you know, in your house and you walk by a mirror and you see the fact that like, hey, you know what? Even with the fact that I've worn the same pair of pajama pants for like four days, five days without changing out of them. I'm and looking pretty good. And looking pretty good. <laughs> like I'm pretty shredded in my pajama pants. Which like, is the uh, the one downside, I think, for bipolar people is uh, you start looking really good. Yep. Your clothes look great. And then you go manic. And it's so much easier to fuck people. Yeah. <laughs> I told you it's not a cure. <laughs> you know, oh my god! It's like, oh wow, now I could actually pick up. Okay, oh my god, I'm gonna be successful. I'm not just gonna be that weird guy running up to people in the bar. I'm gonna be that attractive guy running up to people in the bar. <laughs> uh, the joys of bipolar. Joys. We had some what they are. Their joys. That's. I always think of that Carrie Fisher quote where she's like, uh, "There should be be an annual bipolar day parade." We can just wheel all the depressives, depressives out, still in their beds, like floats. Meanwhile, the manic people are fucking and shopping and making bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, we want everyone out there to make the best decisions they can make for themselves. And yeah. in our opinion, diet and exercise is one of the decisions you can make for yourself. Don't feel guilty about it. Like we had Jess on, the, uh, our, our friend who's a model, who's like, don't body shame yourself. Don't hate yourself. You know, it's going to be a journey, your your physical health. I like you know? what she said about finding one thing that you like about yourself yeah. and building from there. For her, it was her ears. Right, exactly. Which is strange because like if you guys have seen pictures of her. Like, yeah, yeah, there's a lot she of She has a lot things. of good things. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but... Uh, I, I think that idea can go along with exercise, too. Totally. Like, what's something you're good at? Yeah. What's the one thing you're good at? Maybe you're weak in the gym for everything except um, bench press. Yeah. Like, for some reason, you have a stronger bench press than you do. Every, every you don't know. Else. Build your program around your bench press. Maybe your legs are, like, you know, the the, the, the pillars of a Grecian temple. You know what I yeah. mean? And you can squat crazy weight. Yeah. Or you're super fast. And you can, you're can you the fastest guy or girl on your soccer team. Who knows? Yeah. Whatever you, works you for you. You go to play basketball, you suck at shooting. But man, you can stick to people on defense. Yeah, or you're eight feet tall. And yeah. you can just take advantage <laughs> <Yeah>. of that. <laughs> Are there any eight feet tall? I'm sure there are eight feet tall by bowler people. I just... Oh, yeah. Yeah, they gotta be, right? There's gotta be. <laughs> oh, those poor people. Yeah, because they're stuck in the gray clouds <laughs> and their brain's cloudy. And then oh. they go grandiosity. And they're, they're literally <laughs> looking down on everyone. Right? Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. I hope Yao Ming is not bipolar. Um, <laughs> uh, look, uh, be healthy. Try your best to be healthy because that's what all this is about, right? All these conversations about us trying to be healthy, you trying to be healthy. You're listening to this podcast because you want to get better and be healthy. This is something you can control. Control it. Try your best. Just try your best. And if you fail, that's okay. That's okay. There's no shame in that. It's a journey. All of this is a journey. Mm-hmm. You getting better. You listening to this podcast, your bipolar is not cured. You eating yeah. broccoli three times a day, your health is not cured. But it's a step in the right fucking direction, and you got to try and take mm-hmm. a step. You have to. Yeah, just take one step. That's it. And at the same time, be wary of anyone telling you that they have all the answers. Yeah, there's no fucking answers. And that you can cure this stuff. Because there's no cure. There's no cure. There's no, there's cure. no cure. We just 
do what we can to fight it. Yeah. Keep fighting. We love you. Thank you. Write us. Tell us about your journey. Tell us about what your favorite thing to do is exercise-wise. We'd love to hear it. Leave us voice memos, please. Yeah, please. You're all the best. You're awesome. Thank you.